Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode, man, we have a ton of stuff to talk about this week. We have erratas, we have rotation, we have masters of time. So let's just go ahead and get into it. This is episode 525. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. Now I'm here to take back this vibe. You may try, but you know how to say things here. Instant deadpan humor. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your captain. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Send me to be on that. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clicks like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. If you want to get Hero Clicks straight from the source, they also got some cool deals going on. Go to Shop.WizKids.com. Use code DIAL H10 for 10% off your order of in stock items and other stuff. Joining me in other the studio, stuff. <laughs> other stuff. Right. Joining me before he was introduced, how rudely of him is Ian Eggles. What's going on, Ian? Hi, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah, we're old to this, but also new to this. Um, for those of you guys who haven't listened to the previous episode, I suppose this is the new norm, which is both a bit scary and exciting. I understand I'm stepping into some big shoes. I have big feet, though, so. I'm hoping to find my to fill them here. out, fill them out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to be here. This should be fun to have. Kind of the quote unquote first episode be such a jam packed one. Uh, is interesting. We we did record last night, but we did. This we is deja vu. Yeah. This is five twenty five two point for us. Yeah. the The modern rotation came out. Uh, some clarifications for some things we talked about came out, and it's like, oh. Well, as we just we get back well. on the horse, then. Yeah. But I'm good. How are you, Calder? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. This week was a good week. It was fun. It was beautiful out. We got to spend some time in the pool. Oh, yeah. We got to spend some time around town. We got to meet some cool people, you know? Just had an all-around great week. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was so, a good week. We don't. We can uh, We can dive into a little bit about what made us happy, or we can just jump right in. We have so much to talk about. There's honestly. so much to talk about. We have so much uh, to talk I do want to just say yeah, one do some thing. Shout-outs. Do some shout-outs. To the happy. I want to shout-out uh, Nick Brammer. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. For the custom demon in armor he sent me, mm. it's painted like Doctor Doom. I'll show it off at some point, either on the Facebook or a live stream, but he absolutely killed it. He had posted it earlier, and when I saw he had it for sale, I was just staring at it. Like, like the post was like five minutes old. I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so really happy to have that in my collection. And uh, yeah, shout out him for a great paint job and for hooking me up for a really good price, too. Yeah, so, paint job is insane. I, I'm like the demon in armor is already such a cool sculpt. Seeing that yeah. paint job, I was like, dang, this is so. It's pretty. It's like maybe my favorite Doom, as crazy as dang. that is. Like that's how that actually that's how like wild. good it is. The the cape is dynamic. The effects on his hands are really cool. Yeah, I I like it a lot. Let's jump right into some of the news here. This was kind of on the tail end. Where <laughs> it's funny. You know, Deadpool Weapon X just came out, and now we're on the tail end of news for that as we get into Masters of Time news. But there were some ratas and clarifications. A lot of them are pretty simple, slash what we kind of expected anyways. There was a lot of fixing the rarity tabs and set numbers and things like that. I think on the lower end of changes, Major Logan is just 45 points instead of 50. I think nice that's buff. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty nice stealth buff to him. And then a uh, this is the whatever clarification for weapon x which i really like is that he cannot be he can't be chosen for mastermind which yeah. is just so big that they can't like abuse that as someone to like constantly mastermind to and then they fix the comma placement for wolverine x23 but the big one ian the the one controversial shaking. one the uh, facebook waves. is is krakoa whose lowest point line is 150 points and yeah. they're kind of just ignoring the lower line on the on the yeah. card no point um, value just the purple line just the purple line Honestly, hanging out with the state of poison ivies which i'm sure we'll address in some fashion at this point i don't think poison ivies are end of the game i'll say that i, think I don't they're think annoying, so but krakoa would have made them better so krakoa not existing at presumably like 50 75 yeah. points probably around that um 
I think is overall good for like the public discourse of this game because I think people would have lost their mind if it's like, oh yeah, I can cross map you and get and rid you of don't your get powers. to use all your powers. Yeah. Then it's like, what does Kong do against this? You have no yeah. impervious, you know, like all that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. wow, they really do just mess you up. So I'm I'm okay with it. I wasn't invested in Krakoa. I didn't I like. Wasn't I didn't like what he did. I didn't buy him. You know, I like, have two of him. Oh, there you go. Just because uh, <laughs> just happened to pull a few in XDPS and. He was never particularly expensive or sought after, so yeah, I just kind of kept them. They're sitting in a in a little container at my parents' house. <laughs> sure, that's <laughs> so, funny. Yeah. Um, the other one was like a hell cow clarification. Oh yeah, hell cow was pretty. Uh, so I did also appreciate that hell cow like clarifying that I think what it says on the card is click number six is what she starts on. Yes, yes. Instead, as opposed to the green starting line shows click five on the card. The dial itself is click six, so now this just reflects the text and the dial, what's on the card. So, in theory, if you play enough Hell Cow, she can still heal up in one click, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in one go, which is really cool. But this is technically slowing it down a little bit, but this is just kind of accurate to how she was before. It was just kind of a miss input on the, the green starting line on the card. So, I like that clarification as someone who's going to play a lot of Hell Cow. I'm very you know, excited to play a lot and of And a lot cow. of Hell Cows. And a lot of Hell Cows, yeah. The herd is only two right now. We own, we have ten. We have ten, but we oh. only have two legacy cards. Oh. So, we're gotcha. trying to... I was about to be like, if I know you guys can't see us, but my face was disgusted. Yeah, it, it you, really was. It was like, see, wow. You have work to do. You've got I cattle know. to herd. No, I've got, no, I've got cattle. <laughs> And we did. I did do the math. She is by weight, since that's how you sell cows by weight. She is <laughs> technically the most expensive cow ever. Oh, because by weight she's like zero point, I don't know, four or five ounces, something like oh, that. She's like three okay, ounces. I see what you're saying. So yeah, yeah, usually yeah. cows are four or five dollars a pound. Okay. So for her being X amount of ounces and selling for about twenty <laughs> something dollars, <laughs> you know, in right theory, here. yeah, yeah. I so like it's really it. funny. But what's, yeah. a, what's the saying? All all hat and no cattle. All hat and no cattle. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's for for a second. I was looking at you like that. Oh, that's fair. Mm-hmm. No, it's fair. But no, you're no, all cattle. I got my you don't cattle. Even have a hat on right now. What's so. over there? Yeah, I don't wear a hat in my house. I know you don't. I'm just saying, like, I, I, like oh, to reverse, oh, the, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> reverse the saying. All cattle, no you're hat. All cattle, all no, cattle hat. no hat. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, I'll take it. But yeah, the erratas I think were some necessary ones, especially the Weapon X one. Um, yeah, a member I did of our wanna... Discord messaged me. He's like, "Yeah, that's so broken." I was like, "He's like, we just like played a test match with with it." And I was like, "You had to play a match to realize Infinite Mastermind is good." A little, like, little good. Yeah. No offense to, I won't name him. Bat Reed. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. He's like, I was just curious. That's so But funny. I, I did ask him. I was like, you had to play that out. <laughs> like, yeah, on. Infinite Mash Minds. It's maybe a little good. It'd be good. And maybe now Madam Xanadu, who we'll talk about later, can Oh, man. Give him yeah, Master let's not get Mind. too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Master's of Time. I, Master's I think of we Time. Gotta talk about let's, it. We have to talk about it. Let's get into it. We had a Scott Porter unboxing this last week. There's a figures.com unboxing. And of course, the coolest of all of them, there was our unboxing, oh, yeah. Ian. Mm-hmm. So. I love what I'm seeing in Masters of Time. Oh yeah, so far it's set of the year candidate. Kind of just yeah, and instantly we've seen set of the year candidate. Sixty percent of it. We eve seventy percent of it. That seems right. Three bricks, four super boosters. I think a majority of the seed. We're still missing some uncommons. Like, we're we missing haven't a handful seen... of uncommons and rares, which is kind of weird. I don't know the numbers. If I looked through. But uh, yeah, we're missing a handful of uncommons and rares. Super rares, obviously. We've seen now three of the chases. Let's see, Cal. We've seen four chases. Four, yeah, okay. There yeah, because Scott got two, we got one. Scott got two, we got one, one, and then yeah. he got yeah, Cal L. And then yeah, the super booster figures too. There's you know however many team up cards as well. Yeah, all the team up cards. That is another just so, thing that's like oh, kind of probably like sixty seventy percent of the set we've seen. Yeah. Um, there's still kind of a question mark on the primes in Masters of Time because Etrigan has an A. Yep. Black Beetle has an A. Yep. And then we got Reverse Flash, who who is the prime? Oof, man, he yeah. is. We'll talk about him in a he's bit. Gnarly. That guy is. Yeah. He's gnarly. He's gnarly. Oh yeah. Looking at just uh, the set as a whole, the first figure that I have to talk about in Masters of Time, just no question, is the 300 point Dark Side. Oh, absolutely. Who has been. First a bit off, controversial. Hats off, amazing sculpt. I love. I absolutely adore this sculpt. Yes. Flying with the his Omega Beam lasers, it's an, it's insanely sick. The but angles he, they have on the it. Angles yeah. are cool, man. It's what uh, you want, dude? I mean, 
just like looking at just looking at the card, you see all the improved movement, the improved targeting. Yeah. One three hundred point line, an ability to come back to life, like potentially twenty two clicks of life, and this is like to me, this is what you want in a three hundred point figure. Will he break the game? Will he be super meta? I don't think so. And honestly, no. like I'm very okay with that. I don't. I think people think they want a three hundred point like murder yeah. machine. I don't, I don't think, they, think I don't, you do. I don't think they do. I mean, no. we if you look at what was it apocalypse as an example right yeah so he was a 300 point piece that you could play either you know some people play three at 100 or you play one at 300 and it felt bad to play against because you mm-hmm. weren't scoring anything you had to be all in on this so for the person that wants to play a tent pole yeah you don't want them to be taken out easy because that's your entire team but on the reverse side playing against that it just feels like everything is for naught because unless you kill yeah. this 300 point guy i just lose if he kills, you know, five it points, could be anything. Exactly. Yeah. Be five to zero, which in my so opinion it, is like the lamest game. Yeah, it feels play. like a slog to play against. So I like tent poles. I think they're very hard to balance and find the sweet spot in the game mm-hmm. of hero clicks. I don't I don't like the idea of tent poles like being meta necessarily, but no. I, I think Dark Side is a great version of a tent pole where it's just very solid. He can come back, he can heal. He has, has a, a fun way of getting rid of being outnumbered, which I think yeah. is always an important thing for a tent pole to have. And I think it's a unique design, and I think it's really fun. And I, I really like it. And I, I know people just, they, wanna, they want to, whatever. They, they want know, that meta. They want the that. The public, they, they want the meta. They want it. Uh, to kind of continue on like the 300-point tent pole piece, I think tent poles at this point cost become infinitely more interesting when you remove the timer, too. Yeah. Because... There's so many factors like, yo, my opponent was stalling or whatever, you know. There's a million things. Or it's just like the pressure of being like, I have to execute. I can't screw up. Whereas like if the timer's gone, it's like, all right, can the Justice League beat Darkseid? That's a lot of fun. Yeah, that, really that is a lot of fun. But the other thing, and we, this is like the one thing I wanted to touch on from the previous recording was like, again, in the, the meta discussion of Temples is like a 20 defense in the Scott Porter era, which... You know, it's coming, coming to a, to a close. A close. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> is a twenty defense enough right now? Like, I don't think it is. It doesn't feel that way. But it's it's strange. You know, you kind of mentioned like a part of your brain sees like a twenty, and you're like, oh, that's oh, so high. What? But you know, people have been hitting with fifteen attacks all year this year. <laughs> yeah. So, like, mul- like four or five times, multiple like, times. I'll yeah. flurry you. I'll trick arrows you, and I'm like a fourteen or a fifteen yeah. for however much. But then. It's like, okay, so I think, like, you know, I again, I think this comes from kind of a meta perspective to have stats like that. But if Darkseid were to have a 22 defense or, like, a 21, like Kong we saw with a 22. Yeah. And that is just, like, even at 500 points, it's still just, like, that's crazy. That's bonkers. But even then, like, a 14 on a 22 is, like, an 8. Yeah. And a 14 is so obtainable. So there's a weird break point in the psychology of like attacks are allowed to be high, but defenses aren't allowed to match that like naturally. It's, it seems that way. Not that I want them both just exponentially rise or anything. No. Like I don't I don't think that's healthy at all. But yeah, it seems I mean we we mentioned it in the ghost recording that no one's gonna see, but there are a lot of twelve attacks. It seems yeah. nowadays more than I mean, I remember there was a time where I, w- I could think of three characters you know in my collection that had a 12 attack and then just in deadpool weapon x there's like 20 it feels like there's a ton there's a there's There's a a bunch of commons and uncommons there's quite a few chases with 12 attacks you know there's prime colossus prime rogue normal rogue like all these characters with 12 attacks and that's an eight to hit dark side so i this is a 300 point and this is a 300 point piece he's the only guy you have so i honestly i think you could have given him like 21 22 Mm -hmm. and felt all right with that and, you know, even then, like, all the perplexes. Have it drop off quick. Have it drop off quick, for sure. But I think... I do like... I think we're in an era where if you saw, like, a 21 or a 22 on 300, I, like, even from, like, a, a relatively casual perspective, I think it'd be okay. There's yeah, There's so much so. stat modification, not necessarily in, like, the department of damage at the moment, but in attack, like, it just feels like attack's been able to run so wild, especially when characters today are making two, three attacks. One perplex is now, I mean, you could make the argument that it's like three perplexes or two perplexes. Yeah, so I mean, so so many attacks with it, yeah. So yeah, dark side uh, to close out, he's awesome. This is exactly what I want dark side to be. I love all of his traits. I love he reduces penetrating. 
And then that the fact that he can just delete characters all of one character that rocks that is really funny. Wonder Woman eighty Flash like (laughs) you're gone. (laughs) Goodbye, erased from Uh. every timeline. Goodbye. So yeah, that's that's the figure I really wanted to highlight from Masters of Time. I think he's so cool. The one I really want to talk about is Super Soar. So I'm obviously big on the Jurassic League. And even though I myself am not a Superman fan, uh, I do think we got like the first Jurassic League that's really kind of something to look at. So Super Soar can make three attacks in a turn if everything goes right for you. It's kind of nutty. Uh, Just the fact that he has charge, don't have speed. And then whenever he hits, you get to place him to another character that he knocked back. He has super strength the entire time. He's a Superman dinosaur. Come on. Uh, He gets to make another close attack. And then with the Jurassic League trait, he can Quake is free, uh, but only if he hit with an attack this turn. Those are all based off hitting with an attack. So, you know, at 50, he doesn't reduce pen. He doesn't have any stop clicks, but he's got five clicks of life. Um, He's got full speed charge. He's got eight speed. You know, he's got giant reach, all that stuff. I think he's might be worth looking at for 50 points. I think he's really fun. Or at the very least, he is your mainstay character if you want to build a Jurassic League team. I love his team-up card, where if it's all Jurassic League, you get to choose somebody to go to their next starting line, which is really mm-hmm. cool. So I think this kind of helps out all the characters that don't have the best low lines, kind of like Batwalker or yeah. you know, a character that could just really use to be buffed to their better powers, you know. I think even eh, maybe yeah, not Wonder Dawn. Dawn. Like, maybe not Wonder. Dawn. I don't know if yeah, I want to put her at. She's flurry. not the best for an upgrade, but her low line is like you know it's all right. It's like fine. Her Flash low line, Raptor's fantastic. Flash Raptor is fantastic. He's in like another like him and Superstar feel like in another class in a totally different yeah scene. Jurassic League of their own if you know what I mean. Like <laughs> they're they're just completely I don't know they're punch they're punching up way harder than Batwalker yeah. and Wonder Dawn are that's for sure. So. And Superstar 2, I mean, just once again, if you can make two, three attacks in the same turn, you're probably probably doing, doing all pretty right. Good. Doing pretty points. good. That's a full speed charge with super strength. So with an object, he's a base four damage. So mm-hmm. maybe hitting you for seven damage right away. You could even pick up an object that's like a bigger, uh, you know, gives him more giant reach, right? Or does it like the anchor or something is giant reach yeah, four or go. whatever. So then he can giant reach four. It's a 12 square reach on super store, which is kind of wild when he already starts a usual two squares forward, you know, on a two by two base. I don't know. I think there's something there. He's got what's nice you know, too cool. is like the free action to place. It's just place adjacent to them. So you can place next to them behind yeah. them, you know, closer to the team for the free quake, which you can do, uh, which is Quake is free, but only if you hit with an attack this turn. So you have two opportunities to activate that. Yeah, Super Soar is, uh, I think he's pretty legitimate. The traded defend is yep. kind of nice. That's neat. Support as free. to but only That also is character. just an extra thing yeah. where it's like, yeah, if he's your big colossal on the team and he can just free support your, your little guys, it's kind of funny. Is, so, it, is it the best like added value ever? No, no but it could but it, come up. But it's there. Yeah, yeah, if he doesn't get just one turned after he alphas with his like three attacks, which he certainly might. Again, no protected outwit, no protected pen, yeah. no stock clicks, you know, whatever. But he does make three, four damage attacks plus whatever. So I don't know. I think it's really cool. But he can also just kind of die. And I, I like that. I like pieces that can, okay, they make a bunch of attacks, but also if they get outwitted, they can just kind of die. I think that's kind of healthy. I think that's glass cannon pseudo. factories. Yeah, I like the glass cannon factory. I'm cool with that. It. So I really like him. And I'm excited to see, especially the Green Lantern and uh, Aquaman, Aquanix. I'm really excited to see what those guys Green do Lantern for the Jurassic like, League. I'm ready yeah. for. Oh my gosh, I hope he's just crazy. Uh, the other, I think, you know, with our unboxing series, I think day two was easily the most fun. Absolutely the highlight. The Wally West <laughs> caveman, the oh, dude, reverse, flash, reverse flash was like, so cool. It was me, Barry. I've been I've been reading the discourse online about these two, and it's like, you know, people are obviously like, oh yeah, if you're not playing a prime, like reverse flash is fantastic. And there's been a few people saying, like, I think you just main force him. And the more I've looked like, at it, yeah. I I'm really not opposed to just main forcing him. Like hypersonic flurry with double rollouts, prob, and uh, hyper time team ability, he's not going to be easy to kill. He's a natural twelve for three. Like yeah. you know, once again, stat modification is so easy. Precision strike, like for forty points, I think I'm happy to have this be my prime. His mobility is insane. His damage outputs insane. Yeah, and caveman flash, who I think so, I was originally higher on than normal. Yeah. I think I'm kind of coming down on him now. 
You know, there's a lot of people are dogging his 10 attacks. Yeah. You know, and I, although I think that's fair, you can give him Bucky's arm. Mm-hmm. And we literally just went on a diatribe about how high oh, you, you get attacks. You can make him like a 13. You can make him a 13 five, easy, yeah. you know. But I like Reverse Flash a lot. And I've been building with Past a ton, with Timebreaker, with Pegasus Captain America. I think both Wally West, you know, Caveman, and the Reverse Flash can go on a Past team, which I think is really oh, cool. Yeah. But just the fact that in our new age of smaller maps, there's an 11 speed hypersonic flurry seems kind of wild. Yeah. Seems kind of crazy. So I don't know. They're both, they both kind of have a special place in my heart for me. As much as I love Reverse Flash, yeah. I also hate Super Senses and kind of just <laughs> like Caveman Wally West for that ability. But yeah, the ability is really solid. It's it's a strong ability, but honestly, you know what? Yeah. It really is the toss up between, yeah, what 40 points gets you a higher attack that you can also modify, you know, I, give him I Bucky's arm. I honestly think, like, he's a I 13 want a main for four force now. Him. I think, I I think you do main, main force, force this guy. Like, as as good as this little sideline thing is, or if you don't build with him in mind, then yeah, toss yeah, him on your sideline. Totally. You know, but I think you do main force this guy. I think, like, I really do. I, I keep looking at him and I'm just like, why not? This guy is so offensive. The other thing, too, uh, in regards to these flashes, I'm really excited about Caveman Wally West because when he, when he does his hypersonic, you know, you turn him to click eight, and the text says, give him any action as free. So that instantly has me thinking, like, okay, if I put the ultimate nullifier on him, Oh, my gosh. <laughs> just run in and nullify somebody. You know, different things like that. If ID cards were still around, you know, like you could ID I guess you can bring in a construct. If you want him to, oh, yeah. he could bring in like a cowboy boot or a chainsaw. Like there's a, I don't know how much in modern, I haven't thought about it enough, but just the, any action is free. I think there's like a ceiling seems there to really, really be pushed yeah. through. Obviously flurry blades exploit is like, duh. It seems like that's what you want to go with. Probably what <laughs> go you want to do. But there may be some like, some cool tricks. Like you cannot discount any action as free. Anything. Yeah. Call it tell me an action. I want to say, like, move action. Just move so it action? sounds dumb. There you go. You can move forward. You can <laughs> well, do that. You can move forward. There's probably that's scenarios crazy. where you might consider doing yeah. that. Yeah. No, I think bringing in the construct, that's a great action. Mm-hmm. I you think can do that. Flurry, obviously. It's an action. He has flurry. It is an action. <laughs> it is an action. There are power actions, move yeah. actions, attacks. Oh, my goodness. So many actions you can up. take. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see. If somebody has like an idea to just absolutely break this, I, in I think that text. I think that, I think that text lets ooh and silver absolutely right. There has, has to, be, to something, be something, right? There has to be such open ended text as any action is free. Has I don't know what it would be, but there's probably some equipment you can give him. The first one I thought of was ultimate nullifier, just because it'd be so hilarious funny. to just run it and like roll a six, <laughs> cobblify him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the construct that honestly seems pretty legitimate. Yeah, because you could just instead of flurry blazing with him, if they don't have a reducer, you could just make the chainsaw go back to your other click, and now you just have that chainsaw. Yeah, and I just have the chainsaw there. You know, it lets you get a free chainsaw out versus like you flurry blazing. Obviously, yeah, that would usually be better. But like you said, if they're more than likely better. So yeah, but I mean, it's a cool, it's a decent choice. (laughs) You know, if if it is silver, then you know, red chainsaw is an eleven attack. You're a ten. Oh, that's true. So yeah, there's a. And, you know, like an autonomous fire hydrant to maybe oh, yeah. remove some barrier. Yep. There's a... Because, yeah, he doesn't even have to, like, make the attack. He literally just has to use hypersonic. Yeah. Okay, this is oh, so yeah. much better. Okay, wait, hold on. When he uses it, yeah, he doesn't have to hit. He doesn't have to do anything. Just any... Ooh. So he could just move, drop construct. So this guy is a free construct dropper. Yeah, he's just a free construct dropper, All right, actually. so we're figuring Holy things smokes. out by yeah, talking. Yeah, we got okay. it. Any action is free, guys. Dang, Get back really to good. us on this. Let us know... What are you? What's the action I mean, that you want to? He's do like an free? overcosted TK, but if you give him like TK or something, you can be a free TK. Yeah. Hey. Well, I mean, it's an action to use hypersonics, so maybe not really, but but kind of because you could move and then TK somebody. That's true. Yeah. Honestly, there's a few there's a few things you can do with it. If you if you were able to drop equipment turn one, you could move out and equip that equipment potentially to. Yeah. Wow, there might actually be some real possibilities for like abusing this. Any action is free, like just at the start of the game. Uh, in combat, more than likely, you probably want to do the flurry. You do the flurry yeah, but man, there's probably some like legitimate stuff. I mean, like hypersonicing in, dropping a stop sign, and then barriering and oh, saying no improved so, movement. That is so good. There's there's some potential here, guys. Let us know your thoughts on that because, yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah. 
that's maybe way nastier than people are giving it credit for. Any action. I think the hive mind of the hero host community will figure out some dumb, some crazy things to do with it. Yeah. You know, it seems like it's just like, boop. All right. That's fun. That's the most broken thing to do. (laughs) This is what everyone does now. Yeah. It was fun for a minute. It was. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's enough about the speedsters. Do you have anyone else, Calder? Should we talk about the Russian nesting doll? We can talk about the Russian nesting doll. You know, Vandal Savage, the man doesn't die. The man just mm-hmm. keeps going through time, reincarnating over and over again. It's like, oh, I guess I'll be Genghis Khan. I guess I'll be whoever now. I'm, I'm Vandal Savage. No, it is quite ridiculous. A lot of people brought this up, and we also were kind of talking about how, if you want, Vandal Savage, you can replace him just with any character that, uh, was it the past keyword of equal or less points? So you can just choose him. So you can just have a sideline of six Vandal Savages that you just keep replacing over and over and over again. Um, and if he's 150 points, you can make the last one a 30-point yep. one and just absolutely screw them on yep. points, which just is... Get rid of 120 needed, points from your opponent for however funny. much work it takes. It Honestly, it's a little funny. I don't. So the, the one thing that doesn't make it feel too gross to me is he's not that great. No. You know, he's a leadership. Yeah, he's, he's a, a charge mastermind. flurry. He doesn't have any crazy speed. He's not a full speed charge flurry. Sure, he's like a perplexed shape change, but he can be outwitted. He can be dealt penetrating damage. He doesn't have any stop clicks. His lower line um, like really doesn't make sense to me. No, he's a flurry regen steel energy battle. battle yeah, I don't understand why you would pay thirty points for that line. I don't. I don't uh, get it. I guess, leadership personally. for a specific keyword, maybe. I suppose. Um. Where I think he's the most applicable is Mastermind Fodder. Yeah. Because then you can just, you know, pop it another one. They're not scoring anything, and you're just kind of chilling with another it's sandal kind of, vavage. <laughs> it is just a lot to chew through, though. Even if it, it is, is like, a, is, even, at least he doesn't go back to click one. If he went back to click one, I'd be like, this is an impossible figure to KO. Yeah. You have, you know, to do 70 clicks of life you'd have to chew through if he came back on click one mm-hmm. but since it's like a roller d6 thing sometimes it can just be not so bad kind of getting between if he's the... 30 he's just it's just you have to attack me six times I, but I, I you know another thing is you're trading your sideline to do trading that. your sideline for this i think it'll I be it would be funny to do it once maybe yeah. And just kind of frustrate some locals. Yeah. But uh, outside of that... You've activated my trap card. <laughs> yeah. Another, another Vandal, Vandal Savage. Savage. And now I play Vandal Savage, who allows me to play another Vandal Savage. <laughs> pot of Vandal Savage. Yeah, pot of Vandal Savage. Allows me to draw two Vandal Savages. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's goofy. He's just kind of a ridiculous piece. It, it's kind don't of really thematic. Like his dial. It's, it's kind just, of... Yeah, the dial's just it's not just much. It's just all right. You know, it's, it's fun. But uh, that's a goofy thing. I, how do you feel? Do you think they should errata this? Do you think they should change it? Or do you think they should just let Vandal Savage? Let's see if people do anything with it. Yeah. Because I honestly... Do you think someone will break it? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe? I don't want to put anything past the Hero Who's community no. when it comes to breaking anything. You know, yeah. I feel like if there's a will, there's a way. There's been a lot of figures that we just didn't think were broken or a way to break them and then mm-hmm. someone comes up with some like scenario some Adam combo Freeman comes along and changes yeah. the landscape yeah. of wonder woman 80 flash forever oh gosh yeah. yeah something like that might happen it doesn't seem healthy it, it seems like this should maybe be like choose a character that's not named vandal savage to turn into would probably be a nice fix yeah. or maybe make it like a once per game when he would be ko'd oh sure turn yeah. him into somebody else if it ends up being a problem or if that ended up like maybe just being like an errata, like how some of the X-Men erratas were, where it's like, oh, that wasn't the intended use of it, you know? Yeah. I'd be okay with something like that. But uh, right now, since it seemed broken, it just seems kind of, I if don't know. If his dial was better, I'd if be his more dial worried was, about If it. his dial was better, I'd be like, but hey, sitting please. across from this, I'd be like, I think I can just ignore this. Yeah. You'll always have leadership, but you paid 30 points for it. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a team player, too. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I yeah. think he's fine as is. He's goofy. The what was devastating news, but is now like fine. Don't news. even care. Yeah, like yeah. whatever. We yeah, still, we'll still have a good time. News, and that's uh, Madame Xanadu Prime, who comes with tarot cards. Comes with tarot cards. Which yesterday on Facebook, as of record, well, two days ago, as of recording this, when it was released that she came with tarot cards. Oh boy, uh, we were we were devastated. We thought they were going to be gone. We've been counting down the days for rotation on these tarot yep. cards for yeah, pretty much since the day I got my X of Swords case, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And uh, yeah, we were worried that, oh gosh, here, with, here we are for another two years. Yep. I was not noticed, excited about it at all. 
the tarot keyword. Tarot keyword, yeah. What's all that? What's that about? And in our recording yesterday, we were like, what What does this mean? What characters will have that? Yeah. We'll jump ahead a little bit here. You want to tell them what the tarot keyword's about, Calder? So the only way that you're going to be able to play tarot cards is... So they say they're going to be making an update to the rules of tarot cards. In order for tarot cards to be included on a force, a character on that force must have the tarot keyword printed on their card. The following characters were errated, though, to have the tarot keyword considered printed, and this will be as of September 16th, 2024. This change is going to be taken, so XOS Tarot Saturnine and the XOS OP Kit Saturnine are all going to be updated to have the tarot keyword printed. But that does mean that after rotation, the only way you can play tarot cards is if you're playing like a Madame Xanadu in Modern or in Silver, a Tarot, a Saturnine, or the other Saturnine. I love that so, so much. No, I love it so much. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. I'm so happy about that. Or I guess, no, print it on their card, so it can't be Scott Porter. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, oh, oh I guess print. Oh, it does goodness. have to be. It has to be printed on their oh. card. So thankfully, you just gave me, like, it can't a heart be. Attack when it you can't said Scott be Scott Porter. Porter. No, it can't be Scott Porter because they have to be printed. Oh. Thank goodness. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, so now you have to play these figures if you want it. I don't know. I don't think it says main force though. It just says included on a force. Oh, don't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Side I don't want to put that. I don't want to put that into the ether. But you know, that's that's wrong. one. That's one scary thing to, to think assume, about. We're going to assume main force. Yeah, let's let's, for let's the sake assume of our sanity. Finish, yeah, for my the sanity. wall of champagne we have ready to. Pop that's so true. On day of rotation. Oh, September sixteenth. It's just going to be glory, glory, hallelujah. Yeah, tarot much. cards are gone. <laughs> tarot cards are done, for the most man. part. They're done. Uh, for those of you who like tarot cards, uh, you, there's you know, still a way for you to play them. You can still play them. Now I'm just not you, subjected to it every single exactly. competitive game. Yeah, It's not like a necessity. I think my biggest problem with them was always that they were zero points. They're they don't zero have a points. sideline spot. Like They have no cost associated with them. And it's a game. And every game has cost. I mean, yeah. the best things in any game are able to do things avoiding cost. Free actions are great because no cost. Autonomous is great because, like, broken because yeah. it doesn't cost anything. It really doesn't cost anything. So when you apply that to, like, the point system, which is, you know, like, if you're playing, I guess, to win, it's, like, to maximize a build, right? Because, I mean, tar- playing tarot casually, I suppose you can do it. I'm not personally interested. Kind of lame, yeah. That's probably the best place that exists in my head. I think if you just play really dumb, fun tarot cards, yeah. not like the crazy, like you're not playing like the star and queen of whatever, all that stuff. It's We did that like test fine. game way That back. was like actually pretty fun. That yeah. test game that was just random tarot cards, you know, didn't really build the force in mind, chose just a random tarot deck. cards for yeah. it. It was a shared deck. I think that was like the most fun I've ever had playing tarot cards because yeah. it didn't feel like I was subjected to them. It felt more like, oh, this is just kind of a, them. didn't build with them in mind, so it was just mm-hmm. kind of random, and it was kind of fun, which I think was more so the real intent of tarot cards, was to just shake up your average game of hero clicks, versus instead it's like, oh, I'm min-maxing these, so I know I have these plus ones, or I'm these plus ones. optimizing the ability. Yeah. To like, you know. That's not fun. Especially the teams that could optimize the card, I don't remember the name of it, that's like, you can only move in straight paths. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That, teams that look to optimize that card, like, it just... I'll be honest, even even though I built competitive teams, or tried to anyway, yeah. never once was like, put this tarot card on. No. Nope. And when people were like theory crafting with me, it's like, oh, what tarot should I play? Like, You're on your own, buddy. Yep, totally on your I've own. I've got nothing. There. I ain't playing them. Not gonna, could not, literally could not be me. Could not be me. Was not me. Wasn't you. And, nope, wasn't uh, me. You know, what's great about that is we both still placed or won multiple tournaments. Yeah. So yeah, we'll while we'll they were that. legal. So yeah, it's kind of crazy that yeah. Anyway, again, Madame Xanadu. Anyway, Madame Xanadu. I do think she's broken though. I think she's insanely strong. She's really good. She blows. I, I won't go as far as broken, but I do think she's very good. I mean, okay, so she's prime. I should say this. Maybe she's prime level broken or prime level strong. But I feel like inherently, giving somebody mastermind, giving anyone mastermind is really good. Mm-hmm. Just because there's been so many times where I was like, man, I wish this character could have mastermind, and it's different. When it's things like Iron Inquisitor, where it's like, okay, but I only get to Mastermind Iron Inquisitor, and he might just die eventually. Mm -hmm. But now I say, oh, you have Mastermind, and you get a Mastermind to a million Vandal Savages, or Time Breakers, or whatever it is. You know, there's fodder. You know, I can now Mastermind to my bystanders, or stuff I don't care about. 
it seems just really, really, really strong. You know, yeah. Mastermind's always been a strong power and one that's been tough to put on people, you know. So I feel like that inherently is really good. Yeah, the 30-point package, you're getting Stealth, TK, Prob, Perplex, uh, some interference with Terra, which I'll be honest, I think is kind of minor unless Madame it Xanadu is becomes like a, a stable. Well, I will say this. That one at least does help you. If you get a good tarot card in play, you get to choose to roll a D6. Oh, Four sure. through six, you can keep it in play if you want to. Or if you just want to get rid of it, because it is a May roll, you can just choose to ignore it and just flip the next card. Mm -hmm. So it can kind of help you at least still keep a card in play. But yeah, so she's a stealth, TK, perplex, prob, mystics figure, hands out mastermind. Uh, and also one of the few figures in modern post rotation that you'll be able to play a tarot deck with mm -hmm. seems pretty strong seems pretty prime worthy to me for 30 points seems i, very I agree strong. with you prime worthy but to i think it's it's really hard for me to use the term broken with primes because you look at how sure. often like i mean destroyer was like i think on all marks yeah broken. he was gross still didn't make every team i mad jim won worlds that year uh and then you look at, like, Spider-Man Prime, who is as prominent as he is. Yeah. And he's, like, I mean, he's probably pretty close to broken. He's really, really strong. High mobility, crazy defense, crazy offense. But it's, like, that's what a pro Like, a Prime has to be, like, Spider-Man Prime to be considered, like, in that tier, yeah. you know? Because even, like, Mad Jim, who was, like, crazy, crazy good, he was still neck and neck with, like, Destroyer. So maybe that's just two broken Primes. But the Prime market, and then, you know, now you're competing with, like, Reverse Flash. That's true. Who is just so much offense for forty points? Like, maybe I maybe I'm too big on him. I guess time will no, tell. No, he's good. Masters yeah. of time will Mas tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. But goodness gracious, Madam Xanadu. I mean, giving people mastermind, you cannot discount. It is this is a new Such a strong utility ability. box in yeah. the brain where it's like, but how good is this figure with mastermind? You can apply that to anything now. Which honestly, that's the best part of this figure for me. Is it, yeah, it increases like the. Uh, just the options you have with every build in the game now. So, tarot cards are, quote-unquote, leaving. We're happy about that. We're so happy about that. <laughs> uh, let's, they'll be still there for you guys who like them. Let's chat about the rest of rotation yeah, while we're on the topic of it. So, this this is kind of wild. It's kind of a... I love this rotation, I will say. I absolutely love this rotation. I like it, except for, for one except thing. for one thing. That's fair. So, the main sets that are leaving, X-Men, X of Swords, the X of Swords, Storyline, Organized Play, uh, Avengers Forever, Batman Team Up, Spider-Man Beyond Amazing, and then the surprising one is Avengers 60th is rotating as well. That's I the guess, thing I'm sad about. You know, they're taking the, if it sees two worlds, it's gone. It's seen yeah. two worlds, it's going to go. But it's, you know, that's a, a year and a few months is all Avengers 60 has been in modern for. So it's tough, but at the same time, I'm excited to see the meta heal. I don't like, maybe that's a bit too tough of a word, but Ooh. no Spider-Man, no Carnage I'm excited for. As much as I love the constructs, I'm ready for to see a meta without some constructs for a while. Uh, I'm ready to see no more Masters of Time, or sorry, <laughs> Masters of Evil. No, I'm, I'm excited for <laughs> Masters of Time. I promise I'm excited for Masters of Time. Uh, I'm excited Recorded. to see no more <laughs> multiversal Masters of Evil. I'm very excited to see that. Even though I, I utilize them, I played them, they're amazing figures. Um, I'm excited that they're going to be I, gone, I think I'm in. I think I'm in the minority. I'm, I'm fine and happy with all of what you just said, but I really... I just love the Masters of Evil. And another thing, too, that's a bummer about A60 leaving. I love the Super Rare Spider-Man. Oh, sure. I love... Yeah. Especially when we have all these time breakers now. Shout out to Devin Owens for pointing this out on his show. Um, using time breakers and Spider-Man to give them, like, all shield. Or, oh, like, my PD. gosh. And now you have a bunch of autonomous shield they pieces. Can, they can all autonomously power yeah. action buff your... <sighs> So, yeah, I mean, I love that Spider-Man. That's actually so good. He, oh, my gosh. He's a figure who, he, you know, talking about Madam Xanadu, where every time you build, it's like, oh, Master Mastermind could completely shift this figure. Spider-Man's another figure like that. So to lose him early does kind of hurt. Miss Marvel is another figure that she had her moments, but never had, like, Yeah, I never actually got a player. When I finally bought her after Worlds, I, I still never played her. It was kind of a bummer. Because she was competing with Carnage Surfer. You know, yeah. she was competing with all these things. And I feel like post-rotation... She would have had a better shot. So there's a handful Fair. of figures in A60, mainly the chases. I won't lie. Like, I love them. 
Yeah. I know they're broken. I don't care. I this love does them. bring down the average cost of a competitive team significantly, though, which <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. Which I'm okay with. That's true. But now you look at the new 50 point like powerhouses. Is it just Kong? Is Kong just taking there was a over? lot of discourse like that online today, where it's yeah. just like, yeah, Kong is just nuts. Kong's crazy, and it's like, mm. he's the new like gold. He standard. is just like the new gold standard fifty point attacker. He does way too much for how much he costs. You know, he does a lot. So maybe that is just the way it is. I guess. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, a sixty rotating. Ultimately, it's not the biggest deal. I will get over it. It's tough, though. But I early rotation sad. is tough. I'm a little People, sad. I hate to see it go. We do see these standalone products. It's only one. It's Marvel Hero Clicks Hellfire Gala, the old X-Men Hellfire Gala. I thought Polaris was going to see an uptick in play post-rotation last year. She yeah. kind of did, kind of didn't, though, no. which was just such kind of a bummer. I was like, oh, I really thought she would get played more, and then she didn't. She just kind of didn't. I was like, wow, really? With all the good detectives, with no longer having Magneto for free t- you know, double TK, Still, just players not really see play. She has dice replacement too. Yeah, just, yeah. Nobody. Just, she just still didn't see play. Is wild to me for five more points than Venom Mags, but okay. So that's rotating. I think that's the biggest thing of note out of there. The other convention exclusives. Galactus finally goes home. Goodbye, Galactus. After like four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Late 2020 release. Galactus finally gets to rest. Not that he. <laughs> It was working that hard anyways no. while he was here. <laughs> Master Mold is gone. Uh, Sorry, man. So, goodbye. Sorry, Matt. The Ghost Rider on the Mammoth is gone. Thanos is gone. The Sentinel Bystanders are gone. And this is probably the craziest thing. The Scott Porter Bystander leaves. And so does both the white and black shirt Scott Porter. I'm happy. I'm. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm not, this, I'm not frowning in the studio. This kind of rocks. Uh creativity is back in meta you know when i said the meta might be healing get the game might be healing no more venom you know or venom spider-man no more carnage surfer no more a60 chases no more constructs no more freaking scott porters i'm very excited yeah. to see no now, no more tarot cards you can maybe consider well i don't know with with the next change we'll talk about it, i don't know how true this is but i will say i think non-theme is more of a consideration now yeah the Scott Porter white shirt gave too much for bonus to theme, like plus one attack. Way, just, way too much. You know, he's a perplex because you're always giving him the yellow ring. He's a prob. He's an incredible pulse waver. Like, he's so offensive. I mean, yeah, I I mean, it almost feels like the Scott Porters to me were a similar vein to tarot cards where I played with them a handful of times against my buddy who was also playing them. And we were both just kind of like, I don't, I don't really want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, it's it's fine. It's its own era. You know, it's okay to have, like, strong things in the game. But it does feel shoehorned. I mean, Modern very much is a 275 or 250-point format right now. Pretty much. So to say creativity is back, to a degree, I think, I think so. it's true. I think so, yeah. It'll be interesting to see teams without it and to, you know, maybe see if there's some pullback on, like, stat modification. There definitely is. There instantly degree. is, yeah. But, uh... How much, I guess, is the question. It'll remain to be seen, for sure. But, I don't know. It gets me excited. We, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm already excited for Worlds and Nationals. Yeah. But I'm just so excited for the post-rotation meta. And by the time Worlds comes out, that's going to be Time Master or Masters of Time is already going to be a legal set. Black Panther is going to be either on its way or out by that I time. I think, yeah, that'll probably be um, like at Worlds. So, we'll be able to see what the meta, and we can kind of start to visualize what the meta shaping up post-Worlds is going to be. Pretty much leading into the next major event, which is, I guess, going to be ROC's states in October or really Florida in yeah, January. Uh, well, I mean, Newmark is also talking about his own event series as R- well. But those are going to be happening pre-Worlds. Oh, those are pre-Worlds? Those oh. are pre-Worlds. Sorry, yep. David. Yep. <laughs> My so, bad. I, it's all good. We're hosting one. There might be. We? we are hosting one. Yeah. Hey, shout out. August 24th, if you're going to be in the Omaha area... August 24th is when our event's going to happen. It's 300 Modern. That's a Saturday. That's the oh, okay. date. It's locked. Yeah, don't okay. worry. It's a Saturday. I'll talk. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so it'll be fun. I got to learn what the prizing was today. Ooh, Ooh, I don't get to say it, though. Ooh, but it's pretty cool. So I'm very excited for it. So, yeah, Scott is gone. Scott's gone. Last hurrah. You know, and yeah. I'm I'm just excited to not have to, again, 
feel shoehorned into playing that in every single competitive yeah. team. You know, it felt like he just didn't have a chance without playing Porter. And there's been people that have won without him. So, you mm-hmm. know, props to them. That's awesome. You know, I'm just happy that it's not like, hey, and I have, I quite literally have to play Scott Porter. There should never, ever be a figure, regardless of who it is or what it is, that you have to play. Maybe Batman. That's okay. just not, that's just not, no, it's just not healthy if there's a figure that you have to play that piece. But if it's Batman. But obviously, if it's Captain America, that's totally fine. Well, no, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But speaking of nationals and worlds, they are making a little, it's actually not a little change. It's actually pretty it's massive. Big. It's actually a massive change when we are, what is it, the 16th? It's not quite 20 days out, 16 days out, 31st July has, all the rest have 31. Yeah, 30, so 16 days out, <laughs> roughly 16, 15 days out from uh, nationals, U.S. nationals. And they say this is an upgrade. This is an update for the tournament formats of 2024 U.S. nationals at Gen Con and the 2024 Hero Host World Championship at Memphis. Both these events, map selection will be limited to the 2x2, two 16x16 two, 16 16 square maps. Larger maps are otherwise rotating from modern and are still legal for use at other events for as long as, you know, sets associated with them are legal to play. But specifically for World's Championships at Memphis and the U.S. Nationals at Gen Con, can't use them. That doesn't even say modern event. It just means at those events, you just can't use them. So all side events, I assume, they're just not going to be able this to use is... them. This is... It's massive. Yeah. People have been... And, and I, I will side a little bit with the angry crowd. Just a little bit. Because I, I ultimately, you know, I hate large maps. I hate Morlock Tunnels. So I can't wait for Morlock Tunnels to be, out, to be gone. And at least for Nats and Worlds, it's basically just gone already for competitive yeah. play. So that's freaking freaking it's awesome. I'm not going to lie. I hate Morlock Tunnels. That map is so annoying to play on. It's horrible. You know, it's a very bad promotes a very bad play style of just not interacting with your opposing team at all. It it's also really shoehorns the meta or just like, you know, competitive tournament building, however you want to label it. Yeah. Because it it essentially says like can your team function on Morlock Tunnels? No, it's not good then. It's not good. Cuz if you get taken to Morlock Tunnels and you can't operate on it like you will just get Oh, you're just getting trounced. Yeah, you have no chance. So now, it's kind of been this mentality that we've had to think about ever since Beyond Amazing or really Batman Team Up, which is, okay, but what does the meta look like when there are just small maps? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, now that's reality. That's that's just the world we're living in right now. We have two weeks until Nationals. Let's start working on it. It's such a short notice. It really is such a short notice. Yeah, two weeks of change. It's, It's a crazy short notice for... Changing because now it's like before you had to think of well this team is good on this map if I get put on a small map sure cool but for the most part it needs to be able to function on a large map it has to be able to function on a large map you know but now it's like oh nope scrap that it's only needs to be good on a short map what are my short maps maybe I'm looking at Bloodstone Maze probably a lot more now uh, for some blocking in the way you know it just totally changes the landscape of those tournaments and it's fast I I won't lie it's really fast but just as I think in 2019, ABPI was legal, like it literally was not legal for any event besides nationals that year. And so many people were caught off guard by ABPI being quite literally like legal the same week as like nationals. So to me, it's like it's the same scope of that where it's like you just kind of have to prepare for everything that's coming out, you know, and it's tough. Don't get me wrong. It's really tough. But we knew it was going to happen sooner rather than later. And it just, it happened sooner. <laughs> you know, yeah, it did happen, it happen sooner. way sooner. And I think there are, there are three major points to this that I think are really going to kind of shape the, the entire competitive scene of hero clicks. And honestly, even past that, but with that, like, so earlier stated like, Hey, Scott Porter's gone. You can probably consider non theme more. I don't know if you can, because you really like consider, like going first, picking map, picking map now probably has less weight. Yeah. Because they can't just take you to more lock tunnels and potentially, you know, deny your team or put you on a more restrictive map if they see maybe you have less mobility. So theme right now is I think we're <laughs> to kind of go back to the discussion when short maps first came out and people were saying theme doesn't matter. I think theme actually might matter more than the Scott Porter Ooh, era. Okay. Because Think about how easy it is to get across the map and just absolutely rain damage. Oh, absolutely. It's crazy what you can do. So if you lose initiative and it's like, yeah, go ahead and pick the map. If there aren't restrictive map options in the smaller field, then 
they're going to, okay, yeah, I'll go first. You pick the map. And in the era where we have time breakers, getting across the map is easier than it's ever. Easy, yeah. The amount of free movement that you can get from these guys. Like, if you guys are discounting the time breakers, take another look at them, especially the bystanders. I think you're talking a little crazy, crazy if you ask me. I think you're yeah. talking a little crazy if you're discounting time breakers. If you discount the time breakers, I just, I don't know where you're at. But, man, in a, like, they do not require a line of fire. So even on restricted maps, just being able yeah. to place somebody four or five, six squares out and then, you know, sidestepping up, doing it all again. Like, there's so much opportunity to move people with these things. And then going back to that A60 Spider-Man, giving them all Green Lantern would be hilarious. It is hilarious. Just like, That's actually just kind of wild. Ugh. Having one time breaker carry like five or six more. <laughs> Generate another one, carry them again. So, yeah, the era of small maps and then the era of Scott ending, and then also considering that Nationals is pod play, so you're competing against 16 or 15 other people, 16 total, top four make it through into the finals, meaning you want to play aggressive. Yep. Because if you're playing a defensive team, you go three and one, probably don't have enough points, not you're good. not making the cut. So you want to play a more aggressive team that can score points, especially like in a timed format. They all are. You factor all of this together where it's like you're on a short map. How much does theme matter? I probably want to attack you first in a more aggressive meta. Um, Nationals, I don't think, will be reflective of Worlds or really any tournament afterwards. Mainly, well, you know, factoring in like rotation and whatnot, obviously. But I don't think Nationals will be a good depiction of like what's to come for the rest of this era pre rotation. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because people, like, if I was going to go play a Nationals Calder, I'm I'm probably playing something like Spider Man Prime with. (laughs) I don't know, cart along, like yeah. Black Lantern Batman who could pop up across the map and flurry. You know, I just want to get in your face, try to score as many points as possible. But we're also very similar players. Like that's that's, that's what just we how like. we play. That's what, what we, we like, like to play. To yeah. So I guess in our world, not a lot's changed. Not no, nothing has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. I want to get across map. I want to punch you. That's it. That's all I want to do. You know, it's my favorite things to do. That's how I like playing hero clicks. Yeah. Get in your face as fast as possible. Do as much damage as possible. If you're still standing after I'm out of actions, all right, fine, uh, we'll your turn. Dice, let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah, let's roll dice. You know, that's what I want to do. I've never been a, a tiptoe in my starting area kind of player. It's not. I've tried. I just, I never enjoyed it. It's not fun. I yeah, played it's Scarab not fun. in that one tournament. I just, ugh, never want to do that again. I promise you, I wasn't having fun either. Yeah. That wasn't. Yeah. Well, I had fun against you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had a good time against painful. You. Felt horrible. The playing that back to back, though. Playing was, you and Tristan, fantastic. the exact same team, roughly back to back. Oh, it was painful. Theory crafting that like a few days before, being like, "Oh, this rocks." Uh, Using team ability abuse from that Spider Man again with Scarab. Like that Spider Man just opens up so many builds. It's just fun for team building. Yeah. That's honestly like the saddest part of a sixty rotating because yeah. I don't think that figure got enough play, and I think post rotation he could have gotten more. Yeah. But yeah, what else do we have? Well, that is pretty much it as far as rotation goes, but they do leave us with an exclusive figure. Um, uh, I just say we'll have new exclusive figures for you to purchase and compete for, but before we go, here is a preview. Uh, I'm not going to get totally into it, but it's Deceased Catwoman as an LE, which is really cool. Just the fact that we're getting more Deceased is yeah. really neat. So, I like that a lot. She has some fun abilities. She gives out Batman enemy to characters uh, that have Batman ally already. You know, She's got the 75-60 point split. She doesn't have the whole standard power color thing. You know, She's charged flurry, though, when she gets on her, her undead clicks it's really cool she's just like a neat little piece i think it's solid and she's a little bloody she's a little torn she's up got a lot of blood she's got a lot of blood so i kind of just dig that as far as fitting with the rest of the deceased character theme you know how they look on the shelf so if you've been collecting the deceased if you're playing them i think this is an excellent excellent one to add to your collection she's just yeah she's just pretty cool oh i'll be i'll be picking this one up for sure right now i'm, I'm only missing the wonder woman oh nice and uh just Looking at how much blood they have, they should do a, a D ceased, like D from the from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh. When she's on the M. Night Shyamalan movie and they just dump the bucket D of blood on her. Yeah. Call it D ceased. Oh my gosh. It's oh, <laughs> so funny. Really, really stupid. Oh Sorry. my goodness. It popped in my head. I had to wow. say it. Wow. But yeah, goodness I'm excited. Gracious. I hope there's more deceased to come. Because, yeah, it's a theme I really like a lot. And it's something we don't see a lot of in Hero Clicks. Like, 
the blood on characters, no. the undead, like the zombified stuff. Now we don't see it a lot. No, we got what zombie Wolverine recently. Yeah, and just no blood on him though. And previously it was like zombie no green cap. goo. Yeah, is that, the, is that the one before? That was the most Wolverine? recent one. Yeah, on um, for Marvel. And he looks before like a Scooby Doo villain. Yeah, the He's the like Disney blue. Plus zombies are very turquoisey blue, yeah. whatever you want to call that color. Scooby Doo fruit snack. Yeah, they're <laughs> zombie Captain America, man. But yeah, I think. Uh, nationals will be very very interesting nationals can be a ton of fun this is a wild wild rotation um overall though i think i am very happy about it i really appreciate it because now we we had such a limited space and since we'll be covering nationals it means that every map's going to be a two by two map so it's easier to film oh I didn't even think about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm actually excellent. I'm actually really happy for us. Worlds and Nationals just got way easier to film yeah. for us this year, which just kind of rocks. I'm not at Adepticon as a, literally like the yeah, entire top dude. eight when it was like they uh, all were more playing Morlock tunnels Morlock again. Tunnels. Uh, and it was Morlock so annoying to film. Uh, so yeah. But now it's well, easy. Go us. Yeah. Hey, speaking on Nationals too, we <laughs> probably should talk a little bit about what we'll be doing there. Yeah. Uh, so quickly. We are going to be joined by Azale from the Alpha Strike. He's going to be helping us out with some filming, tagging along a bit as a member of the crew, and that should be a lot of fun. So we'll be recording yeah. games. Unfortunately, live streaming is is very unlikely, just given the space, the amount of We're people. not going to get hardwired internet. Gen Con's no so chance. big. Uh, yeah. If we use data, what are you kidding me? There's 10,000 something people 15,000 something people there's a ton of people in at a Gen cement Con. building yeah all you're fighting this i can barely system. check my facebook feed you know <laughs> it's yeah. it's tough so no live streams but we will be recording matches and uploading them as soon as possible yep in addition to that you will do our usual facebook postings you guys will be able to keep up if you guys want us to cover certain things or if you have questions if you want posts about something shoot us a message while we're doing it we're yep. happy to talk about it post it get it out there um but the most exciting thing i think and we'll be doing this even the night before Gen Con, so a little pre-show. Uh, every night we'll be doing a little recap of Gen Con, and we have spoken with some WizKids friends Ooh. who will be giving us some stuff that will only be available at Nationals for now I'm excited. Uh, to give away to you guys. So if you tune into our live stream, we will have a schedule for it uh, posted relatively soon. As soon as we have more details kind of on our trip and you know, once we have our things figured out, uh, you guys can follow along. We'll recap everything we're seeing. We'll hang out, have a good time, and maybe some of you guys will walk away with some cool prizes. So, yeah, I like to, I like to spread the love. You know, there's you can't always make the every Hero Clicks event, and well, that's one of my favorite things that we do is just give away stuff on the oh, live dude, stream. It's, it's just a ton of it's just a ton of fun. I mean, it's one thing to like have it in hand and be like, "Oh, this is cool." It's another thing to send it to somebody who like yeah. doesn't have the opportunity to get it. I just oh, I gotta gotta reference the being like 15. I think. And seeing uh, they previewed a Doctor Fate con exclusive. Oh yeah, didn't know it was a con exclusive. Yeah, figures insanely cool. See that sculpt? Then Doctor Fate's like one of my favorites. And I saw that I was like, oh my gosh! Like, how do I get this? I cannot wait to get this. See, it's a con exclusive. Yeah, no means to get there. <sighs> Devastating. And then the next day they showed Agent Venom. Just went through it again. <laughs> so to ship it out to somebody who can't make it. Yeah, that rocks. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's seriously so awesome. But that's going to be kind of just Gen Con. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be filming videos. We're going to be getting them up, do some Facebook posts, et cetera, et cetera. It'll, it'll be a fun time. I'm excited to see so. that. I'm also excited to just be at Gen Con again. I love yeah. the atmosphere at Gen Con. I know it's not like the biggest Heroclix event, but I just love the, I love the atmosphere at Gen oh, Con yeah. so much. It's just so fun. I can't wait fun. to get some new dice, <sighs> maybe some pins. I love pins so much. Pins <laughs> I, and dice. I instantly get one of those big... Uh, whatever you call it, the uh, guide for the convention center and flip it open. The middle page is like what all the pins are at every booth. Ooh. And I just look, Oh, which ones are cool? Which ones do I want to collect? And they do the I'll whole, have to do that too. Though. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. I've done that every year I've gone. And then if they have a cool grand prize pin. So when you buy a certain number of pins, you get to turn in these slips. It used to be, you would show somebody that you owned this pin or, or that pin. And then a staff member would give you like one of the four rare pins then once you collected all four rare pins and you showed that to a staff member, they would give you the ultra rare pin, which only if you collected a certain number of normal pins, the four rare pins. Did you pins, ever do that? I did. I did it the first year I was there. Nice. I have it back home. It's like this sparkly, uh, like purple-like castle is what it is. 
Um, and like the four rare pins were like just kind of cool pins. One was like a big dice. One was like a sword and a shield and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll do this. So I did that first year I went to Gen Con. The second year they didn't have enough like, I guess, normal or common pins that I liked. So I didn't feel like I wanted to have to go oh, out sure. of my way to buy all these other pins. I didn't really love that much. Um, and then last year I just kind of did the same thing. I just kind of picked up just like whatever pins I just kind of wanted. But again, if they have a cool, like a really cool, like grand prize, ultra rare pin, I might just do it again. Or honestly, just talking about it kind of gets me in the mood to do some, do some pin stuff. Maybe we stuff. can work so, together. There we go. We can work together and we yeah. can do it because it's, it is just a ton of fun. I if, just want like a handful more of pins, I think. But okay. I don't know. It could be, it could turn into dice. I have too many dice. But I bought a lot of dice at Adepticon and a lot of dice last year at Gen Con, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. I need to find some more just jank dice. Like oh, those, geez. Uh... You have the jankiest dice ever. The uh, What are those, <laughs> the like, casino dice weird. that are slanted? Like, a crooked man lives in a crooked house and he rolls <laughs> crooked dice. Those dice are wild. If you haven't seen these, they, they exist somewhere on Dial H. These just... I don't. I don't know. Even maybe they, they are don't. like casino dice. They're like the clear. They're red the with clear the white red with the white pips. Yeah, but they're like jagged and crooked, and they're balanced. And I asked uh, Brian Galley if they were legal at Nationals last year, and he said yes. But I'm not going to take the time to explain that to every opponent who asks. That's so so no. <laughs> that that was great. Those that's one of my favorite pairs of dice. But outside of Nationals and rotation, we also got a big. Spider Verse announcement. Oh, that's right. Which uh, I know you're not a huge fan. I'm of. really not. I won't lie. We just got rid of one Spider Man set. I wasn't jazzed for another, but I know Spider Man's obviously a popular character. I so love it. you know, I'll I'll, I'll, con- I'll concede that this is probably a set I'll just entirely skip. You know, I doubt they're going to give me three more Captain Americas like they did in the last Spider Man set. Maybe they do somehow. You know, because they gave me Gwen, Carnage, Cap, and Sol- Spider Supreme. And oh, I was wow, like, yeah. wow, they gave me three Captain Americas in a Spider-Man set. Cool. And then SVAC, the set before that, I actually bought into because the chases were so cool. So I wanted to own a bunch of the chases. You know, I wanted the equipment. So maybe they'll find a way to rope me into liking it yet another Spider-Man set. If not, we'll see. So far, I won't lie. I'm not, I don't want to be negative, but it's just kind of spider stuff. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. Oh, come on. It's just kind of like spider stuff. This is no Miles. Way. That's spider stuff. This is Peter. That's spider stuff. This is Lizard. Dr. Curtis Connors. That's spider you stuff. Gotta, you got to look into the meat. I'm looking at okay, look Spider-Man with a gauntlet blasting out some crazy energy with a gold base, too. Yeah, I do like that all the gauntlet is figures. Is the gold base now the Carrying for over for gauntlet. No, I oh. mean, for, maybe for oh. gauntlet people it's carrying because I think they mentioned. I don't know if they You're specifically totally said. Right. Yeah, I think that's right. Wow. So that's at least really cool. No, that is really cool. Because we've now seen Loki. Loki, Hulk, Hulk. who we know is an L.E., not a chase. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's getting the gauntlet, so yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Spider-Ham holding hot dogs? I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how Spider-Ham should feel about that. It's kind of interesting. His his stomach is growling, and he He wants more hot dogs. dogs. It's the Joey Chestnut of (laughs) Spider-Man. Spider-Rex? Dude, come on. Okay, that is actually pretty sick. Oh, okay, yeah, I won't lie. Go. That obviously rocks. I do want I do want that Spider Rex. So I don't think So he's obviously big, right? So there's no way he's in the booster unless these are super boosters, right? He's gotta be I think there was a solicit somewhere online, because then we also see the Web Warrior, the Web E three or whatever. There is no way that's in a regular boost. If it is, I'm disappointed. Unless there are super boosters, like mm-hmm. what's it called? Jurassic League. But I don't think so. I want to... There's something somewhere. Somebody posted a solicit somewhere. I feel bad not having this information on the podcast. Sorry, listener. But, yeah, this is nuts. Spider-Rex yeah, cool. is nuts. I do know that the the three-person base, the yeah. Miles, Gwen, and Peter, that is a like a, a purchasable like a buy it not a buy it by the brick oh, that's figure, right. but it is a like you're the venue can buy i now I remember what you're saying mm-hmm. yep for every brick they buy of this a venue also gets the chance to buy one of these yeah. i believe yep and so this is pretty cool i can't tell based on the picture if it's like a two by two or if it's a one by one i think it it's is, a two by two it's really cool They're it's like got that in front of this it has that flat base it looks like the same as spider rex's it looks like it's a two by two i think yeah i think it it looks yeah. like a two by two to me but they're on like I'm a New York City sure. old school water tower that's on those New York City kind of buildings. That's what it is. Well, yeah, I think it's like a water tower. It's like one of those like <laughs> apartment building, apartment block water towers. Yeah. I thought it was like a castle door. Oh. <laughs> I know it's not, but it kind of looks like it. 
I think that rocks. This the is actually this is actually so pretty goofy, cool. Though. The his eyes are really popping out. He's really nuts. I, I like, can't believe this. <laughs> Whoa, what's happening? Honey, I, I'm a lizard. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's saying in my head. Oh, my God. We got Gwen. Gwen with holding her cell, cell phone, phone, swiping on Tinder or something. I don't know what she's doing. We got Spider-Man Noir throwing a haymaker, throwing like a oh, left yeah. punch. Do a little bashing. This is hilarious. This is very Spider-Man 2 Doc Ock when he's robbing the bank and he's holding all the money bags, he's laughing. It's a pretty cool. Piece. This is like that's the that Doc Ock is. This is what it's all about. So now this I like the web slinger. This guy rocks. Little cowboy Spidey action. I reaching, do like this. Reaching for a what could it possibly be? A gun. He's reaching for a web slinging gun, obviously. But anyways, he's got his boots uh, on the outside of his pants though. He's got his pants tucked into his boots, which is you know. For me, I would never. No-go? That's a no go. That's a no go. That's like a city boy, a cowboy. I was type gonna of say, look. is that some fake cowboy? Yeah, that's some. That's kind of some yeah. fake cowboy stuff. Having your pants tucked in your boots like that, but you know, you know, Spider People. I'm sure he was made by some New York comic artist, so that's what they think it, it should be. We see a clear <laughs> spider spider lady. I don't know who she is, uh, but yeah, she's is a, that like Cortana? Cortana Spider Man. <laughs> I. Don't know who that this is. This guy, I know you're excited for. Yeah, this this is awesome. Pavitor Pavarkar, yeah, or whatever his name. Yeah, Pavitor, dude. I he was like my favorite part of Spider Verse. Yeah, I really liked him. I love his. Uh, I don't even know the name of it. His like special yo yo things. Yeah, the, what are they? I don't remember what they're. Called I don't either. know what it's yeah. called, but I do just love how they animated that. I thought that was a ton of fun. I thought it his was pretty was really cool. funny. I'm interested to see how they like differentiate. This Spider Man to Peter to Miles to Gwen because they're very when they have very similar power sets. Yeah, Yeah. so I'm I'm interested to see what they do with the flavor on this guy to make him like exciting. I agree. And then below that, oh, Mister Spider Cat. Oh yeah, he looks scary. He kind of scares me. Cartoon. He's very angular. He's very triangular face. Can already tell. I want to get a couple of these. Yeah, paint them up. He's gonna be like crazy small, right? Like just from the how big the base is to how tiny he is. He's just itty looks bitty. like a looks like a three by six base. No. <laughs> three by six base. Cat Jeez. No, he's uh, yeah, he's really tiny, but. Overall, I'll be this curious. Is exciting. I'll, I'll be curious to see how this set tries to drag me in to buy it, but you know, it already feels like flavor wise to me. Uh, different. I think it's different enough. Yeah. That's always my worry with the Spider-Man set because, again, the last three Spider-Man sets, it's been, yep, we had a Miles, Peter, Gwen, we had a Doc Ock, we had a Green Goblin, we had a whoever, and, and I just don't want them to feel too terribly similar. I think with it seemingly focusing on more alternate versions of Spider-Man, I'm really hoping that helps it just feel diverse from other Spider-Man sets because it always, I, I don't want, will. yeah. Just looking at what they've initially previewed here. This is like the first Spider-Ham we're getting that's yeah. not a samurai. That's like a normal spider ham in like no, years. We, oh, okay, a normal like a normal spider ham. Yeah, there was the con exclusive like ten years a ago. Long at this time. Point. Yeah, wasn't it the only other spider ham. Him and like, I think was so. That it. Yeah, so this is like our only other normal spider ham in yeah like ten years. It's kind of crazy. I dig it. No, I'm happy about that. Spider ham's great. So we'll see how much of it is spider ham. We obviously see a couple villains. You know, there's the lizard and then. Doc Ock, I think that's it. So, I don't know. We'll see how much they fill out, like the Sinister Six and other spider villains. But overall, I'm excited for this. I think Spider-Man is a character that you kind of just always kind of want to have around. I know you won't agree with me on I that. suppose so. But, uh, I guess. I like it. I dig it. I think it's fun. Let's see. I want to say that is all of our news this week. It It was kind of stacked. We got through it. I'm pretty happy with everything that came out this week. I'm stoked. I'm excited for Nationals. I'm really excited for Worlds. Oh, I guess, yeah, one quick Worlds announcement. They did announce the TCB package oh, and yes, what did. the hotel is going to cost. So the hotel is going to be $159 a night at the Memphis Graceland Hotel. The TCB package can be added for up to, I believe, four people in your room. Um, and it is going to be $49. And you will get the 2024 Elvis Presley Experience Tour ticket, which is pretty neat. You get a Marvel Hero Clicks Venom Goddess Symbiotes, a Cyclops exclusive figure, King Arthur exclusive figure, and you get a voucher for an entry into Battle Royale. So another stacked TCB package. It's it's pretty sick. I think getting a at one point a four hundred dollar figure, the Venom God of Symbiotes, is pretty darn sick 
for uh, just fifty bucks. So yeah, I really is, like uh, that. You get this is like one of the best a King packages. Arthur that's new from earlier this year. You get a Cyclops that might be new at Worlds, I think, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So oh, he'll be at it's great value. Or is he at mm -hmm. Gen Con? I guess we don't know. I guess we'll never know. Scott Scott showed him off in uh, in April in forever April, ago so that I live stream. I think that's a Nationals one. Then. Okay. But I don't quote me on it. He might be just at Worlds. Do not quote Ian on that. <laughs> if I catch you quoting me on that, oh my. so mad. Dude, so it's mad. All over. Oh, I just no can't. So Couldn't yeah, be me. it's a it's a great package. It's gonna be really solid. And yeah, I'm just kind of reminding everybody, get your hotel reservation for Worlds. We're excited to see you there. Oh, yep. And then to cap the show off, we'll do a quick mini ooh ah Patreon plug here so we're about to answer some listener questions these guys are asking them on our private patreon discord server i know what you're thinking hey calder i want to be where all the cool guys are all the cool heroes players how do i do that yeah just follow the link in the podcast description below go to patreon.com slash dial h podcast go ahead support us at the five dollar tier or above and you'll be entered you'll be able to get a part of our discord server you will see patreon exclusive videos you'll see videos early you'll see all sorts of fun patreon exclusive content you'll get a be in the discord server with Ian and myself and all sorts of really fun people that just kind of chat hang out there's just such great value to this discord server to our patreon you also get all these cool action tokens depending on what tier you sign up for uh 25 dollar tier higher that gets you a t-shirt you know it just rocks we do a ton of giveaways if you thought we did a lot of giveaways main channel we do a bunch on patreon so there's a lot of value, but also one of the coolest things is just, you just can ask us questions in a really easy way. So, first up, Tyler M. asks, I heard rumblings in the Clicks community about a Bat Cave Iconics. If this is true, should other layers and hideouts be made? Calder, why would the Fortress of Solitude be a great addition? No, nah, I don't think we need Superman's, you know. I, I'm down What I it. call it. That's the cool. popsicle palace. I don't want. I don't want Superman's popsicle palace in Hero Clicks. I can live without it. He does have at least cool stuff in it. I will say, like how like Batman has like cool stuff in his fortress. Superman has like that little city of people, right? I mean, from and he's the got a outside, few other dude, things. It's like an ice palace. It looks popsicle. Tight. Popsicle palace. King Arthur's castle, maybe. Okay, that That's could be a cool like one. Maybe. Uh, I was I know on the on the yeah. ghost recording. We were just joking about characters different apartments like captain hey America. captain america's apartment daredevil's apartment <laughs> punisher's apartment yeah, punisher's grimy war apartment it that might nasty. actually be kind of cool, be kinda you know, cool. up the garage door and there's just bullets and a bunch of guns, guns and stuff and... knives whatever yeah that um, could be something i think the x-men danger room is probably oh, my yeah, favorite right. so far or even that's like a, a cerebro one. or something like that but i think the x-men danger room would be really cool yeah, I'm down with that. Where it comes like special pieces of terrain to, like attack you or something. I think it'd be kind of neat. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Some, like turrets. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't really know if if places need to exist in the game outside of like maps. Maps. You know, there's probably some exceptions that I can't think of. Like the Bat Cave, like being a playable figure, you know, all those years ago. I mean, it's that's so wild. That's a hero clicks piece. <laughs> it's just like look at this giant diorama, this hulking mass of plastic. It rocks, but it's also just this does not need to be a yeah. thing. I'm happy to have it, but yeah, like what is this? A little crazy. <laughs> Matt Reed asks, Batman and Captain America have to fight on a football field. They must remain inside. That's a big space. They must remain inside the football field. They only get the items they would normally carry on them and can't use any of their vehicles. They also don't have prior knowledge of who they are fighting, who comes out on top. So basically saying, like, no prep time. Mm -hmm. um, That's kind of... I mean, that's like the whole thing. It, right? feels, it feels like a bit of an edge. Is that, is that what you're saying? I think, once again, it's all about closing the distance. I think if Batman can't keep Captain America away from him, Captain America is just faster, stronger. He doesn't get as tired as easily. Batman is still just a human being. Captain America has super soldier serum. So I think Captain America just probably takes this in an unbiased answer. Mm, With no know. prep time, I don't know what Batman's standard know, carry yeah, what bat belt is. Carry is. <laughs> yeah. Man, but what if he had like some kind of like ice grenade or whatever, and he just freezes Cap for like sixty years, and then just leaves the football field? Point Batman. And I guess that's Point Batman. Yeah, it really no... just depends on the gadgets he gets. Yeah, 
But at the same time, like, you know, maybe he cuts the lights in the football field and then you're, like, running around hiding out. Okay. Comes up behind Captain America, snaps his neck. Snaps his neck? <laughs> yeah, when Batman snaps his neck. If we're talking, like, you know, first appearance Batman, Batman has a gun. <laughs> so... What does he say? They only get the items they would normally carry on them. So I, I don't think the one-off appearance... What, what, what time period? What time period? <laughs> Captain America also has a gun, depending on the time period. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so it's a shootout. So it's a shootout. So who's a better shot is what... I think that's what Matt is getting at I think, here. yeah, I think... Definitely, anytime anyone thinks of a Captain America versus Batman fighting scenario, they definitely think it just ends up being a gun <laughs> a shooting gun battle. battle. Uh, Captain in which, America. In which being... case, I'd say it's a draw. Oh wow! Okay, mm-hmm. maybe it's a draw. I don't know. I feel like this is kind of a kind of a loaded question, Matt. At the same time, though, it's like I don't feel like Captain America is exactly hard to figure out. So finding like a weakness, I'm not going to say Batman couldn't do it. I don't know. They're just like brawling on the football field. Yeah, probably cap. But I think even I don't know. I think yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. If it comes down to like a slugging match, I think it just ends up being cap. But I I think Batman would know that like in order to win, it can't become that. But I don't know what he's doing to like. It depends. Batman's got no prior knowledge. I guess he could probably assess that Cap's an above average human being. He should be able to assess that just on looks alone, right? Mm -hmm. So. As much as Batman just kind of does sometimes run in and throw punches, I, yeah, you would assume he probably he would, wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, like we know he have, he'll have like smoke pellets. Definitely smoke pellets. He'll Definitely like the, the grappling, grappling gun. gun. Yeah. That's standard carry for sure. Uh, call call in the bat wing and just like nuke. He Batman says no right. vehicles. No Matt vehicles? Reed says no vehicles. Yeah. Uh, but he has a, a cell phone that I could probably call. <laughs> the yeah. Okay. I don't know. I feel like it could it could go either way. I, it's just it's too open ended on the Batman side. I think. Yeah, I think that's so, fair. Uh, we'll we'll attribute it to a shoot off. That's what. We'll Obviously, it's a shoot off. Obviously, when you think of these two characters, it's a shoot off. It's a forties shootout. Uh. <laughs> Bill asks, after this fight is over and they both shake hands, how hard do they both get smoked by Dr. Doom? I honestly do think Dr. Doom's an unfair matchup, though. Batman and Cap together taking on Doom? I think, yeah. They'd obviously be like, well... Yeah, they would, they would, it would be a classic, it would be a classic hero meeting team up, right? They fight in the beginning. Oh, Dr. Doom's here now? I think Cap and Batman can easily close the gap on Dr. Doom. Between the shield, between the smoke pellets, between being able to disorientate Dr. Doom, all of his range-based weaponry, mm-hmm. I think you can probably close the gap. And I think if Cap closes the gap, it's over. Yeah, I feel like I feel like working together, they would just stunt on Dr. Yeah. Doom. And I love Dr. Doom. I think Dr. I mean, he's one of the most powerful villains in the Marvel Universe. He's got magic, he's got science, he's got you know special robot suit mm-hmm. armor thing. But he doesn't get like Doombots or anything. He doesn't get Doombots, yeah. He's also just showing up at this football field. Under the same rules, mm-hmm. then I think, like, yeah, like I think I think a two on one of like, the oh, football. Like, What's up, guys? <laughs> he's got his duffel bag and gear. Yeah. <laughs> he's like sweatband. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Does Doctor Doom? Is there I a think, world where Doctor Doom could? I mean, he could just probably. be like flying around, lasering them. That's what are we doing there? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> grapple gun, grapple gun, and throwing the shield. I guess at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like we just have to pray that Cap can knock him out of the sky. Out of the sky, basically. You know, Bill, you might be right. Maybe. But we'll never concede that point. Why would I? Just tell, just tell Billy's right? Yeah, never. No. Not happening. We had a great listener question <laughs> uh, from Ian Diamonds. He asked, hey, Calder and Ian, how much cooler, how much, how are you so much cooler than Matt and Bill? I just think it's natural. Yeah. I think it just kind of comes kinda naturally, you know? Yeah. It's something that you can't really work toward. Mm-hmm. It's something that just has to come naturally. And I think despite trying... And they try really hard. Matt I know they try, really they try really hard. hard, but they're just not cooler just than always us. Always just trying to impress. People. Yeah, they really it do try to impress us really a lot. Work out for them, and then yeah, they get stunted <laughs> on on a HeroClix podcast. Uh, and then Bill goes on to ask, "Is tarot now the best keyword in the game?" No, no, no. I mean, as it's, I, I think in order to, to say a, a keyword prime. is good, you have to play a team of that keyword inherently. Or are you simply saying that just because they have the tarot keyword, they give you access to tarot cards, which are strong? Does that make it the best keyword? I still think no. No. No, I really... I think right now, 
probably monster or no probably mystical is the strongest because I'll, I'll be honest where my head's at hmm. if i was gonna go play in a competitive event tomorrow it's probably looking like blackheart kong yeah i also really like legacy daredevil i think mystical is really easy to build with i like a right Rack now a lot you get kale you get ghost rider you get a lot of stuff with mystical mystical is crazy good right now oh mm. Best keyword in the game, I think. I think detective is a pretty detective's tough. Pretty it's a strong keyword. keyword. I don't know if it's best, but if there's like a trinity of keywords, you could probably put it in the three slot. I think mystical is for sure. Mystical's for up me. there. Um, I don't know what the next one would be. Mystical detective, <sighs> maybe an argument for monster there. But honestly, I think Monster and Mystical is like they have enough like similar vein to where it's yeah, into Mystical those are kind of the same. I don't know what other themes are really being played right now. I think Avengers has Gotham likes to City, stand on. <laughs> but Maybe. I don't think it's like the best. Yeah, Mystical I think is the best keyword. I, I think don't Avengers. Think I think Avengers is, is very solid. I don't think Tarot's anywhere near the best keyword. Just no. because you get access to a Tarot deck, nah. Madam Xanadu Prime is legit though. She's, yeah, Bill Talk. Bill Talk crazy. But all right, not going to do a second Patreon plug. You already heard that. You already know what it's all about. But if you want to support us in different ways, make sure you are following us on wherever podcasts are. Leave us a five-star review, all that cool, fun stuff when we upload to YouTube because I know you already got that bell notification button slammed on there. You know, feel free to like that video, comment on that video if you want to support us. It means a lot. I already know you're subscribed, so I'm not even going to tell you to subscribe to our YouTube because I know you're already subscribed to our YouTube. Uh, we just had a great week of Masters of Time unboxings. Thank you guys so much for commenting on those. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. We really appreciate that. And like we said during those videos, we are going to give away our Chase Zala Jor L. You can tune into a live stream this Friday, so more than likely 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If that changes, we'll have an updated time on Facebook and on YouTube when we post when we're going to go live. But make sure to tune in to that live stream on our YouTube channel to see ooh, ah, who won the Zala Jor L and maybe even a little more. Maybe we're giving away some maybe. more Masters of Time. Maybe. Maybe we are. Maybe we're not. You know, who knows? But I'll do the quick readout and then we can do some shout outs and call it a Day. Dial H for Hero Cooks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Cooks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Make sure to check out Shop.WizKids.com if you want to buy Hero Clicks straight from the source. They got a lot of cool deals up there. Always nice, just kind of checking out, see what's going on. But if you want to buy some things when a sale's not being ran, things that are just kind of in stock that aren't iconics, you can use code DIALH10, D I A L H 10, 1 0 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order there. Ian, any shout outs you want to do before we sign off here? A quick shout out to everybody who's listening and everybody who will invite me into their home car workout session. However you or wherever you choose to listen to Dial A Chat. I know things are going to be different. I know my perspective is different on this game than Simeon's was. And I know it's going to be a bit of a change. We might lose some of you guys. We might gain some. Uh, either way, I just want to say it's a pleasure to be here. And I look forward to seeing just kind of how Dial H organically evolves as it always kind of has. So, yeah, thank you to all of you guys uh, for supporting us, whether that be listening to the podcast, watching videos, however you do it, talking to us at events. Uh, it's like my favorite thing in the world. So thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Right on. No, I couldn't have said that better myself. Thank you, guys. Well, for all your Hero Clicks content, podcasts, YouTube videos, unboxings, and more, make sure you dial H. And like always... Happy trails. And call Calder directly at his cell number of six. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks. Now I'm here to take back. Bye. You may try, but you know how we say things here. It's the deadpan human. Over oh, okay. six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your captain. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Send me to be on that. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make Hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow.